My name is Mr. Paul, uh, and I am going to teach your class today. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, so, um, to tell you a little bit about myself, I'm a teacher. I'm also used to be a scientist. Um, so I did science back in the day. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to learn a lot of science. And we're going to learn a lot of science about um, animals and how animals work together in groups and how those allow them to survive over time. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about what science is. And you guys can circle around if you want to. So I've got, yeah, just walk right in front. That's great. Okay, so uh, what I've got is a tube. And so this tube, uh, the teachers over here have seen the tube already. Um, but this tube is called the wonder tube, okay? And the reason it's called the wonder tube is I want you to wonder about what is on the inside of the tube. And so let me show you how the tube works. Um, it's got a tube, and then it has these, which we'll call pom-poms. So it's got a pom-pom here, and it's got a pom-pom here. And so what we've got is a tube that I can hold, and then it's got pom-poms that are connected like this. So what I want you to do in your brain is I want you to try to figure out what it looks like on the inside of this, okay? So just hold that thought. I want you to just watch it. And what we're doing now is gathering evidence. I want you to gather a bunch of evidence as we watch. So the green one is attached to the orange one, like that. The green one is also attached to the red one, like that. So the green is attached to the orange. The green is also attached to the red. But it's also attached to the blue, like that. And so the orange is attached to the green, which is attached to the red, which is attached to the orange, which is attached to the blue, which is attached to the red, like that. OK. So what you should be trying to do in your head is figure out how is this all connected so that if I pull on one, the other ones go up. Now that's an OK problem. But it's not, it like wouldn't classify as a wonder tube. Um, because I haven't impressed you very much. Um, some of you are kind of impressed. But I really want to impress all of you. And so we've got a, a green, we've got a red, we've got an orange, we've got a blue. But the cool thing about it is that there's no connection between the two sides. Like the right side is not connected to the left side, what? and the left side is not connected to the right side. Yeah, so it's like this one is connected to that, which is connected to that, which is connected to that. But then there's no connection in the middle. Does that make sense? No. Now, so they don't know how it works either. Anybody know how this works? Yeah. So I showed them yesterday. And they've been thinking about it, but they don't know the answer to it. And so in science, if we ever see something like this that we don't know the answer to, but we wonder about it, there's a series of steps that we go through every time we see something like this when we try to figure it out. And the first step, if you're a scientist, the first step you always do when you see something like this is what you should do is you should start to ask questions about how it works. So what I'd like each of you to do is to take a minute, and in your brain, I want you to come up with one question that you would ask me if you could ask me any question at all. So I want you to each come up with one question in your brain that you would ask me that might help you explain how all the sides are connected together even though there's no connection between the sides, like that, OK? So we should have one kind of one question, OK? So does everybody have a question? Yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you to ask your question. And then what I'm going to say is after you ask that question, I'm going to tell you, that's a really good question. But I'm not going to answer it. Are you OK with this? Mm -hmm. OK. Because this is science, and we've got to figure it out on our own. Like, I'm not going to tell you the answer. So you give me your question. Is there some kind of a magnet or something inside it? That is like a really good question. But I'm not going to answer it. But when you said that, a lot of other people, when you said, is there a magnet in there, they started thinking, too. Like, maybe there is a magnet in there. So that's a really good question. Yeah. What do you think? What question do you have? Never mind. 
No, you've got no. Take as much time as you want. I need to take your time. Do it. Yeah, you got plenty of time. What are you thinking? Well, there was a magnet inside, and when you open it up, mm -hmm. the magnet would have fallen out. Okay. So if there's a magnet in there, when I open it up, why didn't it fall out? Is that the way you're asking the question? Is that what you're saying? Yes, but then I don't see any signal that it's magnetic having inside. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's a good question. Like, we're not going to answer any questions. We're just asking questions now. Have you, have you got one? Do you got a question? Now, everyone has a question. I just have to let you think about it for a little bit. What do you got? Does it follow a cycle? Does it follow a cycle? I'm so happy you asked that. Like, that's a really good question. Do I have to pull it in this direction, like this? and then that, and then that, and if I pull it in the right direction, then I can pull it apart? That's a really good question, and it's the third question that we have. What do you got? Does it have more than, more than two strings? Does it have more than two strings? Like, is there just one string, two strings, three strings, four strings? Like, that's a really good question. Can you see that their questions are as, as good as your questions? <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are baby. <laughs> Some of them were better than their questions. Yeah. What do you got? What does this have to do with animals? Like, really good question. Yeah. Does it have inside, like, Is it filled on the inside? Is it empty? Is it hollow? Or is there something on the inside of it? I think it's hollow. That's a really good question. Yeah. We're not going to share our answers. Because once you tell people your answer, they'll just think about your answer. And they won't have time to think about their own answer. So when we're asking questions, like you, you want to take time to ask the question that you care about. And don't let other people, you know how there's always some kids who always want to ask a question? Like I want everybody to ask a question. Because it's not just the people who raise their hand all the time. I want to know everybody's question. So what do you got? So you got a question? You've got one. What is it? Um, can you please bang on it to see if it's hollow? Yeah. Uh, can you bang on it to see if it's hollow? That's, uh, that's a request. <laughs> like, like, can I ask it as a question? If you knock on this, would it sound hollow? Is that a good way to ask it as a question? It's a really good question. Yeah. What do you got? Right. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Why is it that it does that? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Some other people who haven't asked questions. What questions might you have? <coughs> Got a question? I know you don't have a question, but if you had a question, what would it be? How are they connected? How are they connected? What a great question. Yeah. Like, how can this side be connected to that side even though I pulled it apart? I'm so happy you asked that question. Yeah. What do you got? Could it be something else? Could you use something aside from a pom pom? Could you like paper or a rope or a ring? What do you got? Can you be something heavier than a pom pom? Could you use something that's not light like a pom pom? Could we use something heavy like a weight? That's a good question. Yeah. Who's got other questions? You guys have any questions in the back? Hmm. Like what do scientists do? Scientists, all they do is they ask questions and they try to answer their questions. So like to become a good scientist, what's the first step you have to become good at? Asking, asking questions. questions. Yeah. Now one thing that's like sometimes we feel like we don't want to ask a question because we might think it's a bad question. And the key thing is there's no such thing. Like the only bad question is the question that we don't ask because we want other people to kind of know what we're thinking about. There's probably some teachers who have an additional question. Any questions? Can you pull, I'm sorry, can you, <laughs> can you pull just the, the red one? No, the red one up. Up. Oh, it's weird. It's up. Like you pull one and then it's like another one and then another one. Right. Yeah. Like when, when you pull one up, 
Uh huh. Can the, can the other ones be both the? Like, gotcha. Because I'm seeing like when you pull one up, uh -huh. the other one raises. Yeah. Can you see like when I pull this one up? Like first of all, that one. I don't know if you saw that. That was weird. Did you see that? Like when I pull it, the green one goes up, and then this one goes up. Is that what your question is or not? Yeah. Like why does it do that? Is kind of what you're asking. Yeah. And what else? Yeah. Yeah, so can you pull both down? I'm going to pull both down like that. Did you see that? And then pull it forward. Then I pull it like that. So what, did you, were you peeking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is, the, what, is the, like, the string made of? what is the string made out of? Is this just regular string? Is it wire or something like that? Right? Yeah, do you guys have another question? Yeah. Um, is it two separate strings or, or just one? Yeah. String? Like, is it two separate strings or are they somehow connected? Or is there like a I think one there's big string? Is it one, <laughs> one string to rule them all that goes through the whole thing? No. That's a good question. And what we don't, like, when somebody asks a question, what you never want to say is, like, no, you're wrong, don't ask that question. Because every time somebody asks a question, it opens up another question and another question and another question. Now, the hardest thing to do is have somebody sit in front of you, especially somebody who is, you've never seen before, and say, what's your question? What's your question? What's your question? So today we're going to ask a bunch of questions. But the first thing we're going to do, I'm not going to yell at you, what's your question? We're going to start writing down our questions. Um, and, and, and we'll spend a little bit of time writing down our questions before we share them with other people. So could you do me a favor? Could you go grab, uh, each of you grab one of these whiteboards? You'll also need a pen. And then uh, there's a few erasers. So could some of you grab the erasers and then kind of come back to the carpet? That'd be great. Salad eater. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was delicious. <laughs> okay, today. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to do science. And again, like you said just a second ago, what makes a good scientist, the first thing you have to do if you want to be a good scientist is you have to be good at asking questions like why and how. Those are the two best questions you can ask. Now, in science, what we're always trying to figure out is how does one thing cause something else? So we're looking at what's called cause and effect, but the best ways to get at those are why questions and how questions. And so I've got a few uh, pictures that I want to show you. Um, and we're going to switch away from the wonder tube. You'll have time as we get towards the end of the class that you could come back and look at this. But I want to make sure that we talk about animals and, and animals living in groups because that's way more exciting than wonder tubes. And so what I'm teaching today is about science. And this is like when I was your age, I thought scientists looked like this. I thought all scientists wore like white lab coats. Um, when I was growing up, I thought they were all like old men who looked like Einstein and had like crazy hair. Um, now as I grew up and became a scientist and then started working with other scientists, what I found is that sometimes they do this. Sometimes they do really complicated things. But what do scientists usually look like? Scientists look just like you. They look like these teachers in here. So the scientists look just like us. They're not brilliant. Like they're not the smartest people in the world, but what they're really good at is asking questions and then answering those questions. Like that's what scientists are really good at. And so this is what they really look like. If you find a group of scientists together, they'll sit together like this and they will show each other posters that summarize the work that they've worked on. And so they go do research, they observe animals, they observe the solar system, or they observe physics, but when they're done, can you see how proud these scientists are? When they're done, they stand next to their poster and they show it off to other scientists. 
And let me show you um, what they have on their posters. It's hard to kind of see, but what you see up here are, can you see numbers and graphs and lists? What is that in science? In science, we call that evidence, okay? The only way that you can convince somebody that you're right is with evidence. What is evidence? Evidence is what we observe or what we measure. And so in, in science, you can't convince somebody you're right just by trying to like, um, convince them by saying, oh, you have to believe me, you love me, come on, believe me. That doesn't work. Um, you can't convince them by writing eloquently. You only convince them just by giving them evidence and showing evidence. And so today what we're really studying is groups of animals. Um, animals that live in groups. And really the question we're trying to ask is why do they do that? So why do lions live together? Why do these monkeys live together? Why do prairie dogs live together? The question we're trying to address today is why, 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 why? Why do animals live together? What's the point of that? We're trying to talk to each other, so we're trying to convince each other that we're right. In science, we call that argumentation, and we're, we're studying cause and effect. And so that's not super exciting, but this is. What we've got here are the Olympic rings, okay? Now what I did is I took a piece of paper and I drew the Olympic rings on uh, a piece of paper with a pen, like just a, not a pencil, but a pen. So I drew uh, the Olympic rings, and you're looking down at it. So this is a video looking down at it. And what I did is I captured a bunch of termites. Do you guys know what termites are? Yeah. Termites live on, they eat wood. They're kind of like ants. They live together. And so let me show you what they did. So what I did is I put them on the paper. And, and it's a rope. Watch what they did. So, so if we stop for a second, so what was your question again? Why, why are they like moving on the ring? Perfect. So what I want you to do is I want you to write that question down. Everyone else is going to come up with, let's come up with at least five questions that we have about the termites. I'll be quiet so you can watch it. It's going to take, it'll just keep going and going and going. You can ask me any question but you're not going to raise your hand to ask the question. What I want you to do is come up with a question, and I want you to write it on your board. Okay? I'll be quiet. Uh, you guys can write questions as well. Uh, can you see it from where you're at or not? Yeah. I was looking for termites, and I couldn't find them outside. I was looking at lunch to find more termites, but I couldn't find them here. So We'll have to do with the video. I'll get you one. It's a good sign. We'll be quiet. So we're trying to write five questions. No, you can, uh, I don't even know the answer. So let's write as many questions as we can. What questions do you have? You can ask me any questions about this. Right? Oh, right. Keep writing. Let's try everybody get at least five questions down. Well, Don't ask it yet. Just be quiet. I'm so sorry. We just want other people to think.
if you ever run out of questions, just look at the termites for a little bit, and then another question will come. Could I grab a volunteer? Somebody doesn't mind writing on the board. Do you mind? That'd be great. Thanks, Katie. Over here? Yeah, let's let's go here. Maybe. Is that right? Just kind of quickly get him. All right, we're going to generate. Uh, this is going to be our wonder wall over here. So this is going to be a question uh, wall of all the questions we have about termites. Um, you guys did. What do you think, teachers? Well, they did really well at writing questions. Let's hear them first, maybe, and then we'll judge if they're really good questions or not. Um, so let's start in the front. Could you just give me your first question? Um, um, why do they want to be around the rings? Why do they want to be around the rings is the first question, OK? So if you have that question, you can cross it off. We already got that on the Wonder Wall. So why do they want to stay around the rings? But that's OK, because we've got your question out there. I'm just going to go right across. What do you got? Yeah, why are they following each other on the line? When somebody asks a question, like a really good thing to say when they ask a question is you can say this. That's a really good question. That'll make them feel good. But it really was a good question. Yeah. Do you have a question? Do you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Why did the one termite leave? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Is that your question? Yeah. Why does one termite leave? It's over here somewhere, isn't it? Like, really yeah. good watching. It, yeah. the corner, uh -huh. Why does one leave, and why does another one come back where it left? Uh -huh. And then another one when it comes again, another one left. Did you get all those? So, uh, so far, but I, so, so, why <laughs> the termite leave, and then why yeah. did the other and, one follow and, him? And, and, yeah, follow I think, it? did it follow it, or why did it come back in that same and spot? Gotcha. Why are they leaving in the same spot? Let's write that as a question. Yeah, good. Let's go to your next question. Really good one. That's a really good question. Yeah, what do you got? Um, why do they act like cars? Why do they act like cars? That's a really good question. What do you got for a question? Why do they stay just on the black? Why do they stay just on the black? Oh, yeah. just on the black. No. What do you mean just on the black? Like they're just on the rings. Just on the rings. Let me go to the next person right here. What's your question? Yeah, let's listen, let's listen to this next question. And we'll get to you guys. We'll get to other questions. So why, uh, say it again, it is why, why don't they run away? Let's go to your question right here in the blue. I promise I'll get to everybody's question. Why do they never leave the black? Why do they never leave the black? What about you in the back? Again, don't, like, don't answer his question. Just say, good question. It's a really good question. Yeah, what do you got? What made them follow, what made them follow the line to begin with? Next question, what do you got? Why are some, some of them leaving and, and the other ones not? Why don't some ever leave? What do you got? Like, why are they like, in a bunch like, where three of them are like, connected? Right. In the middle? Right. Why did they bunch up in the middle? And then they're like changing to another spot to be a bunch. Gotcha. Do you have a question right here? They've all asked them all? Yeah, what do you got?
Why are they all going by them, their own way or by themselves? I have a what question. Yeah, give me it. Uh, that what are they trying to do? What are they trying to do? Could you give me a question? What is it? Say it again. Uh huh. Why are they following it like it's a maze, even though it's not a maze? Is that an okay? Yeah, I like it. Do you got a question right here? Why do they run in circles? That's good. Do you got a question in the back? Say it again. The other termites, is that what you're saying? Like in a line. In a line. Yeah, why do they do that? What do you got? Why don't they escape? Why don't they escape? What do you got? Are you run out of space? No, I think we got Gotcha. Why don't they get out of the rings? If she doesn't write it down, we've kind of asked that one already. Yeah. Do you got a question? Why are they all going in different ways? Different ways? What do you got? What are they doing? What are they thinking? What is in their brains? That, that might be one of my favorite questions that anyone's asked. Right? Like, what are the termites thinking? What do you got? That, like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? Like, what's the purpose? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Like, yeah. What, like if you put, like, something else on the color, uh -huh. maybe they won't follow it. Gotcha. So if you put something else, give me something else. What are you talking about? Like, mm. like if you change the color of the Olympic rings, gotcha. you put them again? Let's write that. If you change the color of the Olympic rings, will they follow it? Another question I heard is, if you put ants on there, what will the ants do? That's a good question. Look, we're making her write all the way down to the floor. This is great. Yeah. Teachers, do you have questions about the termites? Yeah. Uh-huh. Would they do this? Like, what a great question. Did you guys hear that question? Would they do the same thing if we made the squares versus circles? What do you got? Would they do the same thing if the circles were white and the background was black? Oh, my gosh. Did you hear that question? What if we made, instead of it being black lines with a white background, let's make it a uh, white background, or black background, white lines. Sorry. Yeah. What do you got? Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. All types of termites, Man. Um, the same way. Yeah. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> Her question was like, do do all types of termites do this, or are there different types of termites that might do this? What else? Like, if they, if they, if you like bring a different like bunch. Gotcha. Like different types of termites. Right. Or they do the Would they do the same thing? How many questions do we have? Yeah, you've got a good one. Are they following the rings because of scent or sight? Did they see the line or did they smell the line? Did you, did you hear that one? Yeah. What a great question. Do they smell it? Do they smell it or do they see it? Can I add on that? Do they feel it? Are they like feeling the line? Are they smelling the line? Or are they seeing the line? Are termites blind? That was another question. Are termites blind or can they see? Maybe, maybe they can like, maybe they're following them, so maybe they're blind and they're following them maybe to they not like, to a smell. Uh, maybe smell or maybe they're like... Feeding something? Let's see, we haven't even talked about food. Like, how long will they do this? Would they do this and starve? Maybe because You know what I'm saying? Maybe they don't even eat. Maybe they're eating the paper. 
What about this? Like, can you see how this question led to another question? Like, what do termites eat? Do termites eat wood? Do termites eat paper? Where do termites live? Can you see how question leads to question leads to question leads to question? Leads to a question. That, like, what if, I think that termites are eating the paper because paper is made out of wood and there's little, like, holes. That's good. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. Are they following the paper because paper's made out of wood and they live in wood? Yes. Did you hear what people said over there when you asked that question? A lot of people were like, hmm. She's got a really good question. Like, that's good. So we've spent a lot of time on termites, but this is important. Like, what do scientists do? Scientists ask questions. What are some of the best questions? How questions? Why questions? How many questions do we have here? 24 questions. Um, how, how, what could this lead to? If I would have found some termites, we could answer all of your questions through science. We can do all of those experiments to figure out what's going on. But questions is the first thing that I wanted to show you. So if you could, take termites and get them out of your brain. And I'd like you to clean off your board. If you don't have an eraser, somebody, your neighbor should have one. Yeah, if you could share it, that'd be great. You guys are the best. Anybody uh, in this room think they could answer any of those questions up there? Like what? Like we've got our questions out. Anybody think they could answer any of those questions up there? Which one? Which question are you going to try to answer? Gotcha. Why is it? Right. I'm going to stop like right there. I don't know if you guys saw that. Somebody asked a question, and what she did is she answered that question, and she answered that question in two parts. She said, number one, this is why they, they follow the lines. What she said is the reason they follow the lines is they live in uh, houses like that. That was her claim. A claim is simply an answer to a question. If you guys hold on to your questions for a second. Yeah. Yeah, hold on to that, okay? So the first thing she said is I think that termites follow because it's where they live. What's the second thing she did? She gave us evidence for that. What was the evidence that you gave us? What's your name? Sophia said, the evidence is I've broken apart wood before and what's inside there, is that what you said? There's little tunnels and lines and that's where termites live. Is that what you said? Right. We broke some wood and inside we saw like, like in the outside, they, it was, it was, it got it and didn't have holes. You didn't have any holes, but as you got to the inside, you saw kind of what she's talking about? And like, what, and like, in like, the inside, not in like the middle, uh -huh. like when you, when the, like, there's like light wood. Like, like I know light exactly light what you're talking about. Perfect. So the two things, the claim is going to be an answer to a question, and the evidence is what you see. And so we're going to change our board. The board that you have in front of you right now used to be a question board where we would ask questions. What it's now going to become is it's going to become an evidence board. So on the top of this, if you would talk at the top of this, if you could write the word evidence at the top, evidence is going to be this word right here. So evidence is going to be what we see or what we measure. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write down not questions anymore, but we're going to write down evidence. Evidence is things that we observe or things that we measure that can help us answer a question. You never go answering a question until you gather a bunch of evidence. The first thing you want to do is we want to gather a bunch of evidence. And so what I've got, we're going to switch away from termites for a second. And we're going to switch towards whales. I don't know if you guys have 
have heard of bubble netting that whales do before? Have you ever seen this? No. Okay, it's a way that they go fishing. And so the question we're trying to ask is how, how, how does living in groups help whales survive? And so I've got a video I want to show you. So what I want you to do is watch the video and every time you hear them talk about evidence, evidence is things that they observe or things that they measure, could you write that on your board? Every time you hear evidence, we're gonna write it on the board. Yeah, quick. That why do they like, when whales are like, they found a group of shrimp? Right. Why do they like take some time to like, Let's wait. open their mouth? Yeah, just be quiet, because we, I don't want to ruin it for everybody, okay? Yeah, watch this. The inmates echo to the sound of a mysterious song. The curtain of bubbles and the haunting call hold the secret to an ingenious way of fishing. Let's write down evidence. If you hear them, like anything they observe or measure, we're going to write that down. So listen carefully. have learned how to feed as a team like this. So 
hopefully you wrote some things down. If you didn't write some evidence down, take a moment to write down things that you heard in the video, things that they told you in the video, things that they observed, or things that they measured. So take a minute. I want you to write your evidence on your evidence board. Yeah, that's okay. I want to give everybody else time to at least write one thing that you remember from the video. Uh, let's, uh, if you want to add a question at the bottom, you sure could. Uh, right. If you would take about 30 more seconds and write down at least one piece of evidence, something that you saw or heard in the video. All right, here we go. Are you ready? So up front, give me one piece of evidence. What was it? Say it loud so everybody can hear it. Only, only, a, few, um, a, few whales know how to fish. only a few whales in the whole world know how to do this. Was that evidence from the video? Did you guys hear that in there? Yes. Yeah. Is that something that they observed? Yep. Is it evidence? Totally good. Okay. What do you got? They blow bubbles to signal the other whales. Is that evidence? Yeah. Yeah. I also think they called, didn't they? Yeah. Like we could hear that. So they call other whales and blow, other, uh, blow bubbles to show them where the fish are. Is that evidence? Totally good. What do you got? Yeah. They said something about they like start to swim in the same position. Yeah. Did you hear that? They swim in formation. Is that what they said? Yeah. Did anybody else write that down? That all of the other whales, not the lead whale, but the whales behind will, will swim in formation. Did you write something like that down? No, but I think it's evidence, right? What do you got? What do you got up front? Yeah. Oh, that there were whales coming at the other whales. Whales were coming front to see the other whales. Good. Other evidence. What else do we got? Yeah, go. The whales make a lot of strong bubbles to get that the fish will come ready. Perfect. Yeah. How do they make the bubbles? How do they make the bubbles? Is a really good question. We could put that on the wonder wall for sure. Yeah. You could almost this would be another piece of evidence. Did you see the video where we looked from above and you could see the circle of bubbles? Yeah. yeah. Like that would be evidence as well. Not the whole thing. Yeah. What other evidence did you guys write down? What do we got? What do you got over here? Yeah. That's perfect. And the, um, and the one and the one that makes the sound tells them like shows them where, where the fish the are. Bubbles. Absolutely. So I wanna I wanna pause for a second. Does somebody wanna try to answer this question? The big question. Why do you think whales live in groups? Like the big question, why do whales live in groups? Do you want to try to answer that? Yeah. Because uh, if they make noise, it's too hot. Say it again. If they make noise, it's too hot. It's more easy to hunt if they live in a group. So that is her claim. Does the evidence support the claim? I think, yeah. Like most of that evidence that we have supports that claim. Yeah. What do you think? Absolutely. Now, what I would say is this. Do whales live in groups so they're protected against uh, other predators? I would say yes. 
Did we see evidence in the video that said that? No. no. Does that make sense? So like, I think your claim is good, your answer to the question, but can you see that I didn't see any evidence in the video that would support your claim? Does that make sense? I've definitely seen other videos. I'm see, sure you've seen similar ones with like killer whales that are hunting whales or sharks maybe that are trying to find whales that really would provide evidence. But in the video we watched, we didn't see the evidence for that. Yeah. Another, yeah, what did you want to say? Yeah, yeah. Why do you think the whales live in groups? The so other the ones. You know what I would say? I would say like probably. And number two is that there's evidence in the video that shows that, right? Yeah, Didn't they say that there's like, one that knows how to hunt and the other ones are going to follow it? Yeah. Now, it's easy when we're watching videos because they'll tell us what's going on. So I want to show you another set of weird animals getting together. This video, nobody's going to narrate it, except some people who are amazed on the internet that these ants are doing what they're doing. So what I want you to do is watch this. Have you seen this? Watch this. Now, did you guys hear what you did right at the beginning? First thing you did was asking questions. Why did they do that? Why did they do that? Why did they do that? So that's the first thing we always do in science. What's the next thing we should do is we should write down evidence. So could you erase your whale board for a second and could you write down evidence of what the ants are doing? And I'll play the video again so you can watch it. So I want you to write down evidence. What do you observe? And try, try not to talk over people so they, can, so they can focus on the video as well. I want you to write down as many pieces of evidence you have for why the ants are... So let's write down evidence that we saw. What are things that we saw? Remember, it's not evidence unless we see it. So we have to be able to observe it. Anybody know what they're saying? Anybody speak that language? Okay. Again, let's write down evidence of what we see in the ants. Gotcha. You guys just hold your boards where they are. This is evidence that I see. They are forming a chain to pull the insect. Is that evidence, would you say? I would say yes. What else? Uh, they are all pulling something. Is that evidence? I would say yes. Some ants are lifting the dead animal. Is that evidence? Yes. Uh, they're making a chain so they're all cooperating. Uh, even though they're not in the chain, they're still cooperating. Yeah, I saw the ones in the back that are pushing, but do you, you see the ones way up here that were fall, like they were showing where to go? Yeah. Yeah. What did you got? A chain? They make a chain of ants to carry the food. Good. 
It's a, it's a, it, it almost looks like they're pulling it, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, I don't know if it is, these ants almost become the chain, and then the other ones I think are pulling on them, does it seem like? Or is it like a tug of war? Yeah. Good. Is that, is that evidence? Do they like working together to pull it? That's a hard question to ask. You know what I mean? Can we tell if they're liking what they're doing? I don't know. Yeah, what are you thinking? Gotcha. Perfect. So are they, are they bringing it back to the home or something like that? So if we say, what is the big picture question we're asking? Why do ants live together in groups? This is all evidence, but the reason we would say of why they're doing that is maybe they're bringing the food back so they can feed it to the other people in the, in the house. Absolutely. Right. Like if one ant goes out by itself, there's no way it's going to be able to... I think that's an earthworm. Is that what it looks like? Or a big worm that they're bringing in back? Yeah. Can I take what you said because I think it's brilliant and just kind of put it in these terms? Your claim that you're saying, your claim is that they can carry more if they work as a group than they can by themselves. What's your evidence? Your evidence is that they form long chains, there's some that lead it, there's some that lift it. That's all evidence that is going to support that claim. So if you could, take your board, and we're going to erase your board, and we're going to finish with one animal of your choosing. So we've got some papers over here. And so I think, uh, Miss Patty, where did you go? Yeah. So I think what they're going to do is work uh, like with an elbow partner or something, like a, a, a partner. And so what I want you to do is you are going to come over to the table and you're going to grab a partner. And what I want you to do is choose one of these pieces of paper. Um, the three pieces of paper are, this is a piece of paper on prairie dogs. This will be a piece of paper on the Ethiopian wolf. This is a little longer one, but this is one of my favorite animals of all. This is a, a piece of paper on the swallow, which is a type of bird. Um, and this is a piece of paper on the banded mongoose. And so what I want you to do is you and your partner are going to decide on one of those four animals that you want to study. You're going to read through the article together. And what I want you to do is on your one piece of uh, whiteboard, what I want you to do is list the evidence that you find in the article that, that tells you why they work together in groups. So what we're going to do is I'll put these over here at this table. So you're going to grab your partner, and I want you to grab one of these. You're going to read the article with them, and we're going to write the evidence that we can find in the article on our whiteboard of why they work together. Does that make sense? Can somebody, before we go, tell me what we're about to do? Yes. Right. There's four different types. And then what are you going to do? Right. So read the article and write the evidence on a whiteboard of, of why they work together. Does that make sense? All right. Let's do it. You can work on the, on the carpets if you want to or if you want to work on a table. Let's go. One or two. I'm still wondering. Yeah. That's good. If you want to work at a table, there's even space in here. If you want to move on a table in here, you sure could. Perfect. So I'll be quiet, but take a little bit of time to read through the article, OK? Which one are we going to do?
and then attract the female you sing, you sing song and light and dependent on the species guard their territory. So let's stop there for a second. What's some evidence that we see so far for why swallows live that, together? That like they need like the female uh -huh. is the one like makes the nest. So let's write it down, okay? All right. Have we got any evidence of why they live together yet? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's read the next one. Yeah. Social and territorial cable. Well, maybe it'll tell us in the cable. Okay. So Let's take a look at it. But where they live, since when do they live? Right, right. They're in danger gotcha. Social and territorial cable. The social group is a social animal which is a family group. That sounds like that's actually evidence, right? Let's write that. They live in groups of like 20 individuals. Yeah. Yep. Right. Absolutely. How's it? How's it? Where's your paper at? Oh, she's got it. Okay, I'll be quiet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to bring it back in, though, so make sure it goes on here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's. Yeah, primarily. So it's, it's just like saying mostly. They mostly live. They mostly feed on beetles and millipedes. So, like, I mostly eat hamburgers and chocolate bars. You do? Primarily. Does that make sense? But I don't think that titles us evidence for why they live together. Though. I know. Does it? I'll let you. I'll be quiet. Perfect. You're awesome. Nice work. Awesome. Can we put it in here too, so we can bring it back? Perfect. Yeah. So what is it? You broke it? You ate my salad, you broke my wonder too. <laughs> no, you have to just go like... I tried the, the flip sideways pull, but I didn't understand. Oh. But see how it retracted? Retracted. It's like our, our morning... Just don't open it like that. How are we doing? Okay. Have we found some? You may want to, in the Ethiopian world, so you almost have to get down to here before we start to see more about like why they live in groups. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that evidence that tells, uh, let's write it down. Okay, well they're one of the most, uh, what is it? The most endangered candidates just means like a dog, like a wolf or things like that. So let's write it down as a piece of evidence. Hi, how are you? So this is what you're thinking now. Okay. <laughs> I like it. You guys are funny. <laughs> it's such a great idea. Yeah, it's a cool idea. What? Of this when you make that. You don't think it's that? We think it is, but you're laughing at it. No, I, I was like, I like it that you uh, you can't give up on it.
How did you guys do? Where are we at? Can I look at some of this? And you'll have some males that go by themselves and very few females. It's weirdly loud in here, isn't it? It's like an echo in here. Do you like it in here? Yeah. I like it too. Yeah. It is relaxing. What else? Did you find the other side? No. Uh oh. Yeah. You know what? This is wonderful. This kissing stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, where is it at in here? Totally, yeah. They also can speak like a language. They can talk a language that other paradoxes can understand. It's cool, right? Yeah, yeah. Now we've learned so much about paradox. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey guys, class, if I could have your attention because I have to finish up. Um, today, I wanted to say to all of you, thanks for letting me come in and see you. Um, the one thing I found is that you guys are really good at asking questions. Like, really good at asking questions. What's the next thing we need to work on? Evidence. We were just talking about prairie dogs over here. Uh, if you haven't learned about prairie dogs, could you give us your piece of evidence you found on prairie dogs? Can I borrow? Yes. Just so you guys can hear it, and then I've got to finish up. Members of a family of prairie dogs interact through kissing and grabbing one another. Is that what you said? Grooming one another. Yeah. Just the family does that. So that was a perfect piece of evidence for why they interact. One thing I've learned about prairie dogs is now they have a sophisticated language. Uh, if you walk into a prairie dog town, a prairie dog will tell other prairie dogs, there's a human here, it's a tall human, and they're wearing like a blue shirt. So they have a sophisticated language of communicating with each other. Um, and, and they are like totally smart. Um, but if you could help me as we, as we pick up, could you take your uh, boards and we'll put them back in on the table and, and your markers down on the table. I'm sorry out of time, but thanks again for uh, letting me have your, your students. It was really, really fun. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you bring these back in for me? That'd be great.